All right, yeah, I think I got this. Today, I'd like to start with an exercise. <laughs> no, not like sit-ups or push-ups. I mean a mental exercise. I want you to think of someone who lived before 500 AD who isn't in the Bible. Ready? Go. Time's up. Did you come up with Julius Caesar, Alexander the Great, or Socrates? Well, if you did come up with one of those three, then you're a lot like the three people I talked to in a scientific poll I conducted in preparation for this presentation. Obviously, everybody knows that those three guys existed and did a bunch of important stuff. But have you ever wondered how we actually know that? Well, the short answer is historians have gathered a whole bunch of evidence over the years, written manuscripts, artifacts, artwork, looked at the legacy of things that happened and figured out whether that made sense with the accounts of these guys that we have written down, and said basically there's a preponderance of evidence that states these guys existed and they did the following things. But if what you want is singular primary source original stuff, smoking gun stuff written at the exact time that they were doing things, we don't have much. So real quick like, here are our classical sources on Julius Caesar. Number one, a contemporary named Cicero wrote letters that talked about Caesar. Number two, a guy named Plutarch wrote some stuff about Caesar in 100 AD, roughly 150 years after he lived. Third, there was a guy named Suetonius who wrote it about the same time and Caesar came up in what he had to say as well. Fourth, fifth, sixth, a guy named Appian, Dio Cassius, and Nicholas of Damascus all wrote about Caesar, again in that 200 to 300 year range after he lived. Beyond that, we can confirm that there was a guy named Caesar based on the fact that there's a famous sculpture of him that got copied and copied and copied and copied, and based on the fact that he coined money. But mostly, do you know how we know what we know about Caesar? It's from stuff Caesar wrote. Caesar told us about Caesar. He was a prolific author. He wrote about his military exploits in Europe, and we still have all of that stuff. So we know a lot of stuff about Caesar from outside sources a long time after the fact, but we know a ton about Caesar because of what Caesar said about himself. Well, Caesar lived from about 100 BC to 44 BC. But if we want to talk about Alexander, we have to go even further back. He lived from 356 to 323 BC, and we have no contemporary accounts that survive of any kind of first-hand description of what was going on. Rather, historians depend on roughly third-hand accounts that came up three or 400 years after the fact. That doesn't mean we don't know anything about him, though. I mean, we know a ton about him, and all of those different sources roughly line up and give us a pretty clear picture of what his life was like. Both of these guys were conquerors, so there's a whole bunch of external political and historical realities that also match up with the written accounts that let us know they probably did this stuff the way it was described. Socrates is a little bit of a different deal, though. He lived a generation before Aristotle. He's regarded as one of the great thinkers in the history of the Western tradition, but he didn't write anything down, and nobody at least immediately recorded exactly what he was saying. We have stuff that Plato, his student, wrote down, that gives an account or an idea of what Socrates was about. And we have some other external accounts that are just way, 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 way after the fact. We have no architecture, no relics, no coins, no conquest. And the earliest copies we have of stuff written about Socrates post-date him by hundreds and hundreds of years. My point is that if you really go and look about how we know what we know about these super famous people, there isn't a ton but it's quite a lot to have surviving for 2,000 or 2,500 years. And it all lines up with each other and with logic, so we take it for what it is. But what about Jesus in the early church? I mean, if some guy showed up, taught all the stuff that he taught, made the social waves that he made, performed public signs and wonders all over the place that everybody saw, then got executed by the state, then three days later came back from the dead, then showed up in front of a whole bunch of people and had meals with them and hung out with them until he eventually ascended into the sky, witnessed by people who were in agreement that that happened. And then a little bit after that, the Holy Spirit shows up and all of a sudden Jesus' followers can speak languages they don't speak and then they start healing people and dead people are coming back to life and this church goes from a group of about 120 people to a group of thousands and thousands and thousands of people that eventually becomes such a big deal that Rome decides it needs to try to suppress this movement and eventually they realize they can't suppress the movement and people in leadership come to participate in the movement and at that point Christianity becomes the dominant, even official religion of the Roman state. That's a really big shift in history. You would think that if all that stuff happened, there'd be some kind of documentation. Recently in my travels on the internet, I've come across some remarks or comments or articles that try to argue that there was no external corroboration of the events described in the New Testament. 
And that's just not accurate. It's not like an opinion question where one could see it this way and one could see it that way any more than whether or not there was a Julius Caesar is an opinion question that one could see this way and one could see that way. We're talking about something that was documented and cross-referenced. And unlike Julius Caesar, who was the conqueror and had control over the information and would have been interested in suppressing information that made him look bad, the church had no power. Jesus had no political power. And yet still, this movement was so significant, even from a position of relative social and political weakness, that these accounts still cropped up in the first century and managed to survive for the 2,000 years that have elapsed since. What I want to do today is take a look at that evidence and give you kind of an introduction to what some of that stuff is, where to find it, and how to read it. I've sat through a history class or two, so I know how easy it is to nod off and start to get incredibly bored by that type of content right off the bat. I'm telling you, this stuff is pretty interesting, and I hope you'll give it a look with me. But to help you better appreciate how big a deal it is that any sources continue to exist that confirm Jesus and the early church, I first want to talk about some of the challenges that you have to overcome when we try to look for this kind of source material. First, whether you're talking about Jesus, the church, or anything else, virtually no original material still exists from this point in history. You can get the impression watching shows like Indiana Jones that there are these huge temples just sitting around out there that nobody really noticed, or these giant treasure troves that it just never crossed anyone's mind to explore that are filled with all of the secret history of the classical world and mankind in general. Maybe somewhere there's somebody sitting on such a trove, but probably not just in an undiscovered, pristine archaeological sense. So not a lot of sources and evidence exists from this era in history because it's all kind of been used up or grabbed along the way. But second, because stuff breaks. Think about stuff that you still have from your childhood. How's it holding up? Not great, I bet. Think about some heirlooms that you maybe still have from your grandparents' childhood. I bet that's really dinged up. Now think about the oldest book that you own. Even that is starting to look really ratty and is falling apart, I'll bet. Now imagine that that book were to age another, say, 1900 years. What kind of condition do you think it would be in? Stuff breaks. Paper falls apart. This is the nature of things. So if you have a surviving copy of a manuscript from the first century, it's a pretty safe bet that there were hundreds more where that came from that didn't survive the trip through time. Another reason that it's difficult to find external corroboration from the Bible that dates back to the first few centuries AD is that early Christians would have felt like that was already done. Well, we've got four accounts of Jesus and they all line up. That's pretty good. They're all in circulation. We've got this one mega document of Acts that describes the early church. We've got these letters floating around that the apostles wrote. Those all account for the same stuff. They did history in a way that made sense for how people did history at their time. What they did checked out as legit history in their immediate context. So again, the early church would have felt like they had done a magnificent job of documenting what happened. Okay, we're going to hit time out there. This is a lot of material. I'll have the next episode up right away. This is going to be divided into a three-parter so it doesn't get too long and overwhelming. If you want to marathon and power through the whole thing at once, be my guest. I'll try to have them up quickly.